let us understand the physiology of dead space let us assume we are having our alveolar unit in which they are getting ventilated and simultaneously getting perfused right okay so let us consider among the all these three units if it happens by any reason some region is getting ventilated but not getting perfused let us consider in unit c in the unit c of alveoli if there is some blockage let us consider there is some blockage in the circulation so these areas of alveoli of segment c they are getting ventilated but not perfused so this area contributes to alveolar dead space so people sometimes get confused between dead space and uh, shunt so uh, let let me give you an example like uh, when you declare death like uh, circul uh, circulatory death there is cessation of circulation right means cessation of circulation or cessation of blood flow so dead space means no blood flow or no perfusion with normal ventilation okay and the concept of shunt is just opposite so hope you got some idea regarding alveolar dead space so this part of the alveoli which is segment c is getting ventilated but not perfused so the air inside this alveoli region during inspiration is not getting exchange so there is no exchange of co2 or oxygen in segment c but in segment a and b there is adequate per perfusion and gaseous exchange but in segment c there is no gaseous exchange due to perfusion defects so the inspired air gets returned during expiration as it is okay which resultantly decreases the overall co2 concentration when measured entirely okay let me draw another diagram for you which will make you understand little bit in depth regarding the concept so this is a co2 concentration versus time graph in x axis time in second and in y axis co2 concentration in millimeter of mercury so i think you guys are now familiar with uh, capnogram okay so this is a normal capnogram showing inspiratory and expiratory limbs okay middle part is expiratory component got it okay so this value is entitled co2 concentration it is co2 when partial pressure of carbon dioxide measured in arterial sample its value lies above the etco2 range it is peso2 partial pressure of carbon dioxide in arterial blood sample and this region is alveolar dead space so the alveolar dead space contributes to the gradient so this peso2 minus etco2 gradient is contributed by this alveolar dead space
hope you are clear about the concept okay so what is the normal value of the gradient generally in healthy individuals this gradient ranges from 5 to 10 millimeter of mercury right okay so what is the significance of this gradient so when there is any rise in dead space for example due to short acute pulmonary embolism or fat embolism or due to sudden onset hypotension or hypovolemia or cardiac arrest there is transient rise in dead space and the alveolar attest and the pso2 it is your to gradient increases this amount this uh, value increases more beyond 10 12 or 14 so you can assume the underlying clinical scenarios going on by calculating the gradient in your clinical practice okay so let me know in the comment section what is the principle of CO2 measurement using capnography or capnometer. Keep learning. Thank you.